Welcome back to Cannes, it's day five, and it's time for me to pull the trigger on another gorgeous apropos de Cannes montage. That's quite enough of that. One of the biggest events of Cannes this year is the new film from Martin Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon, a Western true crime thriller about America's Osage murders of the early 1920s, based on the non-fiction bestseller by David Gran. With co-writer Eric Roth, Scorsese crafts an epic of creeping existential horror about the birth of the American century, a macabre tale of quasi-genocidal serial killings which mimic the larger erasure of Native Americans from the United States, and places in the drama's foreground a gas slip marriage of lies and poisoned love. The Osage took their name from Missouri and Osage rivers. Neukonska. Children of the Middle Waters. Move, said the great white father. There are many, so many hungry wolves. Can you find the wolves in this picture? It's a film which echoes Scorsese's earlier work about mob violence, mob loyalty, and the final inevitable sellout to the federal authorities, whose own bad faith gradually emerges. But in the end, this film is about what all Westerns are about, and perhaps all history, the brutal grab for land, resources, and power. Lily Gladstone gives a performance of tragic force as Molly Burkhart, a Native American woman from the Osage tribe who, like all her people, has become unexpectedly wealthy because the apparently stony and unpromising land in Oklahoma on which the white authorities allowed the Osage to settle has turned out to have huge reserves of oil. But the Osage are still subject to a racist and infantilizing condition of guardianship. To claim their income and spend it, Osage individuals largely need to have a white guardian co-signatory. And there is something else. Molly and her family are deeply disturbed by mysterious illnesses which have been killing off Osage people, one by one. And later the bodies of Osage murder victims are to be found, including Molly's wayward sister Anna, played by Cara Jane Myers, whose autopsy is bizarrely carried out in the open air, on the crime scene itself. Into this situation has arrived a slippery, venal young man called Ernest, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, an ambitious but also submissive and fundamentally inadequate man, greedy, stupid and biddable. He has returned to America after service in World War I and comes to the vast estate of his wealthy uncle, who's offered him a job to work alongside Ernest's hard-faced brother Byron, played by Scott Shepard, who's clearly been extensively normalised in the violence and corruption over which this uncle presides. This cattleman plutocrat is William Hale, played by Robert De Niro, a man of calcified resentment and self-importance who preens himself on his good relations with the Osage people. Hale interviews Ernest for a position as his vague underling, courtier and dirty work factotum and encourages him to date and also marry Molly, whom Ernest has already met, which would give him, and therefore Hale, a legal claim on Molly's head rights, her oil entitlements. And so Ernest and Molly's doomed marriage commences, complicated by the terrible fears of Molly's ailing mother, Lizzie Q, Tantu Cardinal, who has a quietly beautiful death scene, and by Molly's diabetes, which is made strangely worse by the medicine Hale has procured for her, and which Ernest administers via injection, while always simpering and blubbing his concern for her declining health. As performed by Gladstone and DiCaprio, the relationship between Molly and Ernest has a kind of spiritual nausea. Ernest is sincere about his feelings for his wife, in his way, but they are part of a context of bad faith and violence. His real relationship is, of course, with his uncle, the beta to the older man's alpha. Weirdly, DiCaprio starts to look like De Niro, like a dog resembling its master, a younger victim-villain version with the same gimlet-eyed fear and hostility and the same rat-trap mouth with the corners turned down. 
His uncle William has inducted him into the Masons, and it is into the local Masonic Hall with all its regalia that Hale leads the wretched Ernest for a corporal punishment scene when the young man lets him down. The most extraordinary corporal punishment I have seen in the cinema since Lindsay Anderson's If. Lily Gladstone creates a persona for Molly which is self-reproachful, with shame at having collaborated with her persecutor. She has dignity and calm, though, and rises above the squalor all around her. But that calm is also the stricken immobility of illness, and she also knows that Ernest was never any good for her, but she was charmed and seduced by him all the same. Scorsese presents a remarkable story with the audacious framing device of a briskly insensitive true crime radio show featuring Osage characters crassly played by white actors. This is an utterly absorbing film, a story which Scorsese sees as a secret history of American power, a hidden violence epidemic polluting the water table of humanity. Thanks very much, that really is it for the day. Please give this vlog a heartfelt like and a passionate share on social media. And please have some respect for yourself as a digital media consumer and subscribe to this channel and leave a comment. See you demain.